Good morning, everyone. How's everybody doing? Uh, thank you for coming. I am Steve Elliott, chair-elect for the Redwood City San Mateo County Chamber of Commerce. Right, thank you. On behalf of our organization, I'm thrilled to be here this morning to welcome all of you. I'd like to offer a welcome to our elected and public officials that have joined us this morning. From the California State Senator, Jerry Hill. San Mateo County Supervisor Warren Slocum. Redwood City Council members Alicia Geary. Diane Howard. John Siebert. And Ian Bain. From the city of East Palo Alto, we have Laura Martinez. From the San Mateo County Community College District, Tom Moore and Karen Schwartz. From the Redwood City School Board, Shelley Mazur, Alisa McAvoy, Dennis McBride, and Hillary Paulson. All right, thank you for coming. And from Redwood City, we have the city manager, Bob Bell. Did I miss anyone? Okay, great. Well, again, thank you for coming. I'm honored to be here and have the good fortune of introducing two longstanding, involved, and very dedicated members of our community, Mayor Jeff G. and Vice Mayor Roseanne Faust. First, Mayor Jeff G. Mayor G. has been with the city council since 2009 and served as the city's vice mayor in 2012 and 2013. In November 2013, Jeff was reelected to a second term on the city council and was unanimously selected by his college council colleagues to serve as mayor in 2014 and 2015. Mayor G is not new to city government, serving as a former mayor of the Planning Commission and Architecture Review Committee. He's also served on many regional boards representing the city of Redwood City on issues including reducing traffic congestion, protecting the environment and air quality, and ensuring that Redwood City and San Mateo County's local economy is vibrant and that the quality of life for residents is protected and enhanced. Mayor G volunteers with many Redwood City organizations, including the past president, treasurer, and director of the Redwood Shores Community Association, president of the Shores at California Bay Side Homeowners Association, member of Kenyatta College Community Council, and the advisory board for the Peninsula Conflict Resolution Center. Professionally, Jeff is a vice president and general manager with Swinnerton Management and Consulting in San Francisco. He's a licensed architect and is a graduate of Cal Poly San Luis Obispo with a Bachelor of Science in Architecture. He's married and has two children. Next, I'd like to introduce Vice Mayor Roseanne Faust. Vice Mayor Faust is also not new to local government, elected to the Redwood City Council in 2003 and re-elected in 2007 and 2011, serving as Vice Mayor in 2005 to 2007 and 2007 to 2009. She also served as past chair of the Planning Commission. The Vice Mayor is also involved with regional agencies, including the San Mateo County Transportation Authority, Bay Area Council Economic Institute, San Francisco Bay Restoration Authority, Penn TV and Casa de Redwood and United American Bank. Professionally, Vice Mayor Faust is the President and CEO of San Mateo County Economic Development Association, or SAMCEDA. She holds an MA in Public Administration, a BA in International Studies and Economics, and has completed executive management programs at Stanford University and UCLA's Anderson Graduate School of Management. The Vice Mayor is married and a proud mom of four. Mayor G and Vice Mayor Faust clearly have something important in common. They both love Redwood City and it shows in all they do. It is my pleasure to introduce Redwood City's Mayor Jeff G and Vice Mayor Roseanne Faust to kick off this year's State of the City address. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. Oh my goodness. Uh, Chief Skinner, don't worry, We're, everything's under control, we're not gonna evacuate the building, it's all good. 
It's great to be here with our vice mayor to talk about Redwood City this year. It's an honor to be the mayor. And, and the vice mayor. mayor. And thank all of you, especially our elected colleagues from around the region, to join us to talk about Redwood City and what's going on. This is really a team sport, and you know, there's a lot of information that we're gonna share with you this morning. And it's amazing when we looked at what we were doing and what we've done, how much we've done. And it's really a credit to our staff and our department heads and everyone working together, and all of you in this room, because we talk about partnerships, and it's this team and our bigger team outside of this room that are making great things happen in Redwood City. You know, Vice Mayor, would you like to tell everybody why we're kind of doing what we're doing? So, you're probably all wondering, why are we dressed as firemen and women, and why am I holding a fire hose? It's really simple, everyone. Today, it's going to feel, as we go through our State of the City address, and tell you all the wonderful and great things that Redwood City has been involved with, it is going to feel like you are all drinking from a fire hose. <laughs> so that is the point of us being dressed like this. Get ready. We don't have it hooked up to water, as you notice, but it will feel like you are drinking from a fire hose. And we're not going to try to carry anybody out of the room. Before we get started, I want to recognize a couple of other people in the room, and especially our, our retired mayors. We have Dick Clare, Jim Hartnett, retired mayors, retired council members. Thank you for being here this morning. We have a number of our boards and commission and committee members, our ambassadors with us, so thank you for joining us. And I want to give a special shout out. We have our newly crowned Miss Redwood City, San Mateo County, Emily McNeil. Thank you. You want to add any other welcomes before we get started? I just, I actually want to thank our mayor. I want to thank our council colleagues. We are very, very fortunate to live where we do, to have the opportunity to serve just a wonderful community. And we feel very lucky this morning to be able to share with you over the next 30 to 40 minutes. So thank you. Very good. You know, what we're going to talk about today is us. The city's pride. It's all of us in the room. It's our residents, our businesses, our community. And you're going to see in a moment a brief video. Gina, we have a video. The people of this community and what makes up Redwood City. Our theme today, and you have buttons at your table, is we are Redwood City. Whether you live, work, visit, Every one of you is what makes Redwood City great. You're gonna hear about our accomplishments today and our vision for the next year. We wanna take pride in everything we do and everything you do that makes a difference in our community. We are doing great things together. And what this all means, beyond just doing great things together, is that we can do more. We can do more by funding more firefighters and police officers, renovating and adding parks, restoring human services program funding, supporting affordable housing, increasing jobs, and adding to home values here in Redwood City. So with that, Chief, these things are really heavy. We'll be right back. <laughs> I've been a resident of Redwood City since the late 40s when my parents moved here and I went to Sequoia High School. It's been a great place to live. It's changed dramatically over all these years. I have been particularly impressed with how the city encourages citizens to be a part of the planning process. And if we don't like what's going on, we have every opportunity to tell people how it should be changed or better. 
From my point of view, the collaboration between the city, mothers and fathers, the Redwood City School District, and the Parks and Recreation Department, and the library have all been outstanding. It's a great place to raise children, and I'm very happy to have lived here all these years and hope to continue to live here in the future. Hello, I'm Larry Buckley, president of Kenyatta College. For nearly half a century, Kenyatta has supported tens of thousands of Redwood City residents in providing enriching and life-changing educational opportunities. This past year, we've been encouraging student success with our I Can project. Students have been committing themselves to aspirational goals such as, I can succeed, I can earn my associate's degree, I can overcome, I can persevere, I can transfer to the university of my choice, and I can be a champion in my community. We're honored to serve the Redwood City family and are proud to be your hometown college. My name is Alan Beals. I moved to Redwood City in 1949. I co-founded Beals Martin in 1973. We are commercial contractors, developers, and property managers, and Redwood City is our home. I've seen a lot of changes to Redwood City through the years. I'll never forget walking downtown with my dad in the mid-1950s, and I noticed the streets and sidewalks were almost empty and the stores were quiet, and I asked him where all the people were. And he said that they had just opened a new Stanford Shopping Center and everyone was shopping there now. Our downtown didn't recover from that and other competition until the foresight of our city council and staff took major steps to jumpstart development with a retail cinema project and the courthouse square. Well, I've been here since I was 12, and uh, it's kind of ironic where when I was 12, I had a shoeshine kid in the 900 block of Main Street trying to make a few bucks. And here I am, you know, 40, yeah, actually 52 years later, uh, on the 800 block of Main Street, still trying to make a few bucks. Some might say I didn't get very far, but I think I did. Uh, the store has been in, open for 37 years. We've been in two, three different locations. We have, on three separate occasions, had more than one store. We're not going to do that anymore. But watching Redwood City grow uh, from the square, uh, taking out the front building and putting it in the square, watching the people come for, for Friday night music, it, it's just, it's so exciting, I can't believe it, and the restaurants that have come to town. Sometimes my wife and I to go to lunch, it's, it's a major debate because we're not sure where to go because there's so many good restaurants in there. You can sit outside when the weather's nice and it's just great. The people of Redwood City have been great. They've come into the store regularly. We have a lot of you know, regular customers come in. Uh, my business philosophy has always been if I take care of my customers' needs, mine will always follow. I've gotten involved in my city. I've been a member of the Optimus Club for probably 35 or 36 years. Uh, I was on the Planning Commission, I'm now on the Port Commission, so you get some inside information. I encourage everybody to get involved in their city. Join a service club, whether it be Rotary or Kiwanians or Optimus Club. They all need members because we're, we're sort of shrinking in numbers, but you will help your city. I'm proud to be a resident of Redwood City for over 50 years. As a Mills Act recipient, I've seen firsthand how the city is helping to preserve historical past properties. The Mills Act is a preservation tool created by the state of California to encourage restoration of historic properties like my home. The house was built in 1924. It's a Spanish revival house. It's gone through several owners, uh, one of which ran a brothel here. As a resident and owner of a historic home, I am proud to call Redwood City home. My home represents historic significance and with the city's participation, is preserved for years to come. We are Redwood City. As the principal of Hoover Community School, we are so proud of our partnership with the City of Redwood City. The recent completion of Safe Routes to School project is a great example of the commitment the city has to keep our students safe on the way and to from school. Hoover Community School is dedicated to student success through family and community partnerships. And of course, Hoover provides a joyful, safe, and caring learning environment, and the city's support ensures a strong community for all. Thank you so much. I've been a Redwood City resident for 66 years. Uh, this month, as a matter of fact, that my uh, parents originally from, moved quickly from across country from Wyoming and then uh, to Millbrae and found out that it was much warmer in Redwood City. So I've been a happy city resident for all those years. There are a lot of senior programs in Redwood City. I play senior softball. 
And so I'm active here using Rebbe City facilities a couple days a week, actually three days a week now with the Saturday they gone. So I'm a, a grateful uh, participant in Rebbe City's uh, uh, athletic fields and uh, all the other activities they have. We are users of the city parks. There's so many ways that uh, seniors are benefit by being here in Redwood City. It is an exciting time to live in Redwood City. My family and friends enjoy the variety of events offered throughout the year. Redwood City is full of events, from the holiday events including the 4th of July parade and the holiday weekend, plus concerts and movies in the square, salsa festival and the Oktoberfest. The city is full of events for adults and for the whole family to enjoy. With new restaurants coming downtown as a result of downtown growth and fun events to enjoy, I'm proud to live in Redwood City. How do you like that video? You are Redwood City, we are Redwood City, and that's our theme for today. And let me see if I can get our technology to work here. There we go. So what we're gonna do this morning, and really as the Vice Mayor shared, when we looked at the first script, we said, oh my God, there's so much stuff we've done. And so there's pictures around the room, and we're just gonna highlight some of the things that we've done last year that we hopefully will talk about what's coming for the next year. We talked about why this all matters and what more we can do because of the funding and the growth in our city and making sure there's jobs and housing and dealing with transit. But what we're gonna do is frame our conversation this morning around our six strategic initiatives. Gov community building and communication, government operations, public safety, a community for all ages, transportation and infrastructure, and economic development. These strategic initiatives have guided us, not only this council, but those before, in making great decisions about where we're going in Redwood City. Let's see. There we go, community building. Working together, we build a community that's welcoming, vibrant, and actively engaged in the life of our city. Some of the things we've done last year, our letter of intent between the city and the Y for our brand new facility, uh, intergenerational seniors, youth, all in the same place, working together, learning together, being together. Hoover Pool, in partnership with Abilities United, was open last summer. Again, working together in partnerships. Stanford, a great partner in Redwood City. We've signed a development agreement and things are coming. Our speaker series last year, uh, the first check was given to the Redwood City Education Foundation. Phase one is coming and the key things about phase one, a new park in our community, our downtown events. It's amazing, people forget about our downtown events. They bring everyone together. And Courthouse Square, you've heard me say it, is our outdoor living room. We're working really hard on housing in our community, and it's housing for everyone. And our three steps, investing in affordable housing, and we're so proud of Habitat for Humanity and our partnership with them. Their fourth project is coming to Redwood City. Increasing the housing supply, over 2,500 units of housing in the pipeline and more coming. And then our partners, again, that seems to be a common theme, working with the County Apartment Association, Tri-County Apartment Association, Sam Carr, the mobile home groups, working together to make sure people can live in our community. This is a phenomenal thing. If you think that there's only 365 days of the year, we've had 230 community meetings in the last year alone. Almost one every single day between Monday and Friday. A thousand residents, fire safety day, Look at those volunteer hours, working hands in our community, making a difference. 
And then I guess we all have these funny things in our pockets, right? Social media, Twitter, Facebook. It is a way to communicate and our police department is just fantastic with technology and social media in looking for and helping our community. I always get the wrong button. What's coming? Big item coming in our March meeting. Partnership Redwood City. It's a policy statement by the council about what we mean for you to be a partner in our city and a menu of choices on how you can engage our community. Whether you're a property owner, a business owner, an employer, an employee, we want you to be engaged in Redwood City and to be a partner. And as I mentioned, another great partner at Stanford University. When they launch phase one, a new park for a part of our city that so sorely needs a new park, our Friendly Acres neighborhood. And I mentioned the Education Foundation, the first check for $50,000 was given to them this year, the first of five checks over the next several years. That's what partnership is all about here in Redwood City. Roseanne? So are you feeling proud right now? How do you feel? Woo! -hoo! Yay, Redwood City! So our next strategic initiative is government operations. So we manage the operations of the city with a team of incredible professionals. And I want to give our city manager and his team and our department heads a huge round of applause. Thank you. So what does government operations mean exactly? Up on the screen you see we have new automated and off-site cash payment options. It's fun. You can go onto My Redwood City, go to your bill pay service, and you can pay your bills. Our library checked out over 40,000 ebooks, e magazines, a 60% increase from the previous year. Our residential green initiatives, everything that we're doing to make our community green, our water usage has dropped, uh, what we're doing with our Lawn Be Gone program, and all the different opportunities that we all have as residents to take advantage of the green initiatives. And then our Red Morton Solar Project which is something that people have talked about for a long time and now it's happening. Public information and government transparency. Last year, Sylvia von der Linden, our city clerk, thank you Sylvia and your team, you responded to 144 public records act requests. If you wanna know who's been requesting public records, it's available online, have a look. <laughs> because it's very interesting and I would encourage everyone to do it. That is government transparency. 144 Public Records Act requests. What else? We've adopted a balanced budget. We've maintained general fund reserves. Not only maintained, as of Monday night, 26 percent reserves. Between 26 and 27 percent reserves, I should say. We've improved funding levels for our workers' compensation. We have new programs to promote employee safety. I wanna thank each and every one of our labor groups because we have had successful negotiations with all of them. They have stepped up to the plate to help us balance the budget and to become a fiscally sound city going forward. Attracting leadership talent. This is our beautiful new leadership folks. Look at them. <laughs> We have Derek, and Aaron, and Megan, and Sean, and Ramana. Say hello to them. They are all here, with the exception of one today, and we're sending her our good wishes, Megan. So say hello to them. We're so fortunate that these people have chosen Redwood City and come to work for us. So what else are we doing, looking ahead? We're initiating electronic permit processes and online records. We're implementing a residential and commercial recycle water fill station. Again, something unusual for a community to do. We're looking, we're forward thinking in Redwood City. We're also completing an IT master plan. We need to be as nimble as our Silicon Valley counterparts. And we're refinancing our water bonds. So folks, we're busy. Go ahead and do the next one, Roseanne. And before you do the next one, you need to put your next prop on. Okay, <laughs> here we go. 
Oh, you got to do the website first, and then we'll do public safety. Okay, so, well, actually, this is uh, a good transition because my thanks to our police chief, Chief Gamez, and his team, because they are the ones that have led the charge to redo Redwood City's website. Folks, doesn't that deserve a round of applause? There's the preliminary homepage. It looks fabulous. I can't wait till we launch it. So public safety, what is happening? Safe neighborhoods and homes. Fire public safety. We have a phenomenal fire department who not only manages Redwood City, but also manages our neighboring city, San Carlos. Chief Skinner and his team have advocated and we were able to return Engine 9 to service which is our downtown fire station, right in the heart of the resurgence and what is happening in downtown. That team at the fire department has conducted approximately 2,200 fire and life safety inspections, and in addition, he and his team implemented Squad 409. It's an alternative service model delivery, and the chief would love to share that with you, so please go up to him after. It's innovative, it's creative, it's Redwood City. Here are pictures. Our police and fire department work so much with our youth and our seniors. As, as our mayor will talk about later, community for all ages, well, they live it every day in their work. Safe neighborhood and homes. So what has our police department been working on? And remember, these are just a snapshot. If we were to stand up here, you would be here all morning to talk about everything that each department has worked on. But we've improved the Samba pedestrian overcross with a video of surveillance. We've implemented Project Safe at Sequoia Station, and we've expanded our volunteers in the police service. Our policemen are busy every day, protecting and serving our community, and we are grateful. These are all pictures, safe neighborhoods and homes. Pictures speak a thousand words. Strong environmental policies and infrastructure from our public works department. We rehabilitated or replaced 2.66 miles of sewer pipes. If your toilets don't flush and your trash isn't picked up, I can tell you, who are you going to call? It's us. Those are basic city services. And well, Senator people... Hill's with us. He can call you. He can call <laughs> Senator Hill. <laughs> would, would that be all right? You might want to stand up and wave and actually start passing your card out. We'd appreciate that. It is very, very important. With our police and fire, our infrastructure needs and how we manage them are critical. We've done seismic upgrades to a water tank, and we've replaced 1,200 100 inefficient streetlights with energy saving LEDs. So we're appreciative and grateful for our public works department, Ramana and your team. Looking ahead, we're going to implement a sprinkler ordinance for multifamily units. We're evaluating the shared fire station with San Carlos, expanding our neighborhood watch, which we're going to ask all of our community members to partake in. We're developing a comprehensive code enforcement strategy. People want things to look good. They want things to be up to code. They expect those things to happen. And we're launching, actually in the coming days, the Residential Household Hazardous Waste Collection Pilot Program. I'm gonna pass it over to our mayor who's gonna talk about our community for all ages. Thanks, Roseanne. This is one of the, the initiatives that we rebranded. It used to be um, youth, but with more people alive at one time, we wanted to expand this to be made it more inclusive. We had Irma Hofslin. Remember, many of you may have even been taught by Irma. Uh, back in November, she came to council. We celebrated her 108th birthday. I was invited to a birthday party at Brookdale Residence on Sunday for Maxwell Robbins. I give a shout out to Maxwell. It was his 107th birthday. We have to create a community for our youth and for our seniors, and that's why we went with a community for all ages. We want to make sure that we address the different needs of the different generations that are alive now, in health, well-being, 
education, programs for everyone. But our Park and Rec program, we have Chris Beth, our Director of Park and Rec Community Services, and Connie Guerrero, our Chair of our Park and Rec Commission. Every time I see what they're doing, it's just fabulous. With our park renovations, our De Ninos parks being renovated, uh, Red Morton playground improvements. We had on Sunday, we recognized our first utility box art program and many more to come. If you haven't been past the Perry Street lot, take a look at the beautiful mural on the back of Crouching Tiger and there's more to come. And kaboom, Playful City USA designation. At a uh, council meeting uh, not too long ago, I was corrected because when we came up with the downtown precise plan, wait a second, I said that wrong. When our community came up with the vision for our downtown precise plan, it was to develop a community that was begun to become the entertainment hub of the peninsula. And I was corrected. We are more than that now. We are the entertainment, arts, and culture hub of the peninsula. And that's all great stuff beyond just the construction that's going on right now. And there is so much more coming to Redwood City. Our youth programs, it's amazing. I was talking with, I went to the school board meeting not too long ago, I think it was in November. Our city and our school board work partnerships together. Over the last 10 years, there's about $17 million in programs, field support together in taking care of our community. The library, Roseanne mentioned the library. Derek, welcome to our library. You've got to keep this running. Got five more years of this. We're looking forward to number 10. But look at this. 1.7 million items go through our three libraries. Everyone goes to the library 15 times in our city. Computer sessions, programs, look at this phenomenal numbers of just what's happening in our city in Redwood City. When I was at Brookdale talking to the seniors, they were so excited about the fire prevention programs and the fire department coming to talk to them, as well as the executive directors, hurry up because they have things that kind of block the exit ways. So Chief, your team needs to go out there and help them. But it's not only our seniors, but it's our youth too, to be fire safe. Partnering with Sequoia High School and the Junior Fire Academy, all great stuff that's going on in our city. More things coming. I mean, we have such an ongoing park renovation program. We are renewing parks every single year. Synthetic turf, I know it's a big issue, but we are planning and we're doing it right when we replace the synthetic turf at Red Morton. And again, the diversity of our community. We have Lunar New Year, we have Salsa, we have Fiesta Pratis. That is what makes our city special. We not only are a diverse city, but we celebrate that diversity. Expanding literacy, English and Spanish. And one of the things about the new website coming, and the chief showed me this the other day when I took a preview out, there's a little button on the top right how many languages, Chief, you can pick from about 100, if not 200. You can then look at our website in 100 to 200 different languages because that's the diversity in our community and the diversity of our world. And then technology, expanding technology so everyone can have access to it. Transportation, you saw in the video, I saw the principal from Hoover School yesterday, safe routes to school. I saw a neighbor at that ribbon cutting, and she said, oh my God, what a difference it has made in that neighborhood. People used to speed in front of Hoover School, and now they don't. And we have to do more of that. And one of, the most thing, one of the things I'm most proud of is we finally started the design process for 101 Woodside Road. And Paul Krupka is here in the audience. <laughs> and Paul, what's my favorite saying? Hurry up. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> That's even better. Are you finished yet? <laughs> but to get to the end, you have to start, and we've started. That's the most important thing. And we should have the EIS certified, hopefully, end of this year, early next year. Then we've got to go hunt for money. And then maybe by 2020, 2021, we'll have a new interchange. Very good. Speaking of safety and streets, I think I need your help. So I'm gonna step aside and join me for this short message. Hi, I'm Jeff G, the mayor of Redwood City. I wanna to talk to you about something that we can all support and help accomplish, traffic safety in our community. The fact is, most of us are good drivers and want to be safe on the streets. But in this fast-paced world, we're often in a hurry to get where we're going. 
Just like you, I'm concerned about cars speeding on our neighborhood streets, drivers running stop signs or not stopping for pedestrians, distracted driving, and other instances of unsafe and dangerous driving. Whether you're downtown or on one of our neighborhood streets, we can all do our part to keep ourselves and our community's kids, families, and seniors safe when it comes to traffic. An easy way for people who walk, drive, or bike is to remember these three things in Redwood City. Slow down, pay attention, follow the rules. Everyone wants our streets to be traffic safe, and it's up to us to do this together. By following the rules, we can keep it safe on the streets here in Redwood City. The city maintains our traffic lights, our roads in good surface condition, and the police department enforces the rules of the road. What can you do to keep it safe on the streets? I'm wearing a helmet and following the rules of the road. Drivers need to look out for bicycles. Keep it safe on the streets. Families use these crosswalks every day. So drivers, be cautious. Slow down, pay attention, and stop for pedestrians. Keep it safe on the streets. Running stop signs or red lights can cause a major crash and serious injuries. Pay attention, follow the laws, and keep it safe on the streets. Speeding cars are dangerous for people who walk, bike, and ride. Slow down, keep it safe on the streets. Traffic laws are for everyone's safety. Don't make us have to give you a reminder. Keep it safe on the streets. Thanks for doing your part in helping keeping our community safe and Keep it safe on the streets! Yep. You know, this is where I need your help because it makes a big difference. I was down in front of the Fox Theater the other day and Eric and Lori Lochtefeld, the owners of the Fox Theater, are right here. And there's a crosswalk between the Fox Theater and Courthouse Square. There was a car stopped in front of the crosswalk and there were people in the crosswalk walking across the street. And the car behind that stopped car tried to go around. That car was waiting for the pedestrians. There's not that much room there. So I need all of you working together with all of us to help keep it safe on our streets because there's no reason for that to happen. And we have so many things going on in our city, it's just unconscionable to see people and hear about people hit in the, in the crosswalks, especially at a four-way stop. So it doesn't take long to just slow down, be safe, and working together to keep our city safe. So please help. So what do we have coming ahead in transportation? New parking meters downtown. But this fall, we should have new parking meters. And it's amazing. Uh, Council Member Gary said it the other night. The technology we have is only eight years old. But they're old technology parking meters. So we're going to get new parking meters. We're going to have more parking coming back. And Megan's done a great job. Count down to more parking. We'll bring back the parking spaces that we lost on Middlefield with the crossing 900, about 270 parking spaces, and an additional 600 will come back. We're looking at what we can do to improve our Broadway downtown transportation and El Camino corridor, and hopefully we'll have an El Camino precise plan. Complete Streets Advisory Committee, a brand new advisory committee. We'll be recruiting for that advisory committee this fall starting in March. And then we adopted a pilot program for Farm Hill to slow everyone down. And so your help to slow everyone down would be appreciated. Economic development. One of my favorite topics. So what is economic development? It means different things to different people. But what it is is having a thriving community, a thriving local business culture, and the wherewithal to keep along a path that we can continue to create businesses, to innovate, and to be able to provide our community the services that they need. So what does this mean? Attracting business. Did you know that Redwood City is one of the top five cities in the nation with startup and entrepreneurial quality? In the last four years, 12 Redwood City companies have gone on to initial public offerings, to IPO. 12 companies in four years. Our commercial office environment is surging. Box signed a 10-year lease 
in Crossing 900, and Google purchased six Pacific Shores buildings. We also need to think about retaining business, because it isn't just about attracting. Retaining, in most economic development professionals' minds, is more as important, if not more important, to the growth and success of a community. We retain Shutterfly. Shutterfly was probably 90% out of the door, and we worked with them and the commercial brokerage community to keep them here. Here's some numbers. Just look at these statistics, everyone. Less than 6% commercial vacancy rate in downtown. We have 76 eating and drinking establishments. How many in the room will admit to having hit all 76? <laughs> or at least making a good effort to try. We have 104 businesses in 168,000 square feet of retail space. We have five entertainment venues. We have 150,000 visitors per year for city concerts and special events. Century Theater boasts a million visitors per year. 330,000 square feet of office space has been leased. And thank you to Kaiser Hospital for building their new hospital in our downtown, 280,000 square feet, plus 4,000 parking spaces, and more coming. It is an exciting place. So as we wrap up our State of the City this morning, it's not just about doing things, it's about making a difference. All of these things, when we add them up together, enables us to do more for our community. Firefighters, police officers, parks, library, human services programs, housing, jobs, property values. This is what it means to be a vibrant community, one that's alive, one that's making a difference. So I hope you join us throughout this year in celebrating We Are Redwood City. As we wrap up our, and there'll be a time for questions and answers. Oh, okay, another prop. Here we go. Yeah, I feel like I need my hard hat and go to work now. As we wrap up our state of the city, I want to just thank everyone that's been part of this process that we've gone through. It's a team sport. Celebrate with us throughout the year, work together, make a difference. The video, I want to thank our video uh, testimonies. Ralph Garcia, Dennis Logie, Claudia Dakin, Bill Nicolette, Margaret Marshall, President Larry Buckley from Kenyatta College, Amanda Rothengoss from Hoover, our editor, producer, videographer, Officer John Cowart in the back. John, thank you very much. <laughs> Roseanne, you want to do our sponsors? I actually, my hat goes off to Amy Buckmaster and the Redwood City San Mateo County Chamber of Commerce. Not only for the support of our state of the city, but the support of our community and everything that they do to invigorate, to revitalize, to vitalize, to whatever words you can think of, and I'm making them up right now, so thank you. <laughs> I also want to thank Pat from Oracle Corporation. Pat, where are you? I know you were, there you are, Pat. Oracle is a longtime and very valued Redwood City community member. We feel fortunate to have you here and for all that you do, not just for us as a city, but for so many community groups and nonprofit organizations. So thank you to Oracle. I mentioned earlier, this is a team sport. No one here does it by themselves. We have several of our department heads here, several of our public safety team here. We have all of our partners, many of our partners here in the room together. It takes all of us working together to make a difference here in Redwood City. But I want to make one special thank you, and we're going to celebrate later in the year that someone's always got to be the quarterback. And I want to thank and acknowledge our city manager, Bob Bell. So, 
I guess we get to take a couple questions, if there are any, about what's going on in Redwood City or what's going to be coming in Redwood City. We'll do that at the very end. Everyone should hold their water glasses when this part comes, just a thought. <laughs> any questions, anything that anyone's dying to ask of the vice mayor? <laughs> <laughs> this isn't, this typically isn't a shy group, so I'm suggesting someone other than the usual cast of characters get up. <laughs> if not, I just want to say thank you very much for joining us. Oh, yes, please. <laughs> Actually, we have Aaron come up and answer the question about the precise plan. <laughs> Basically, um, our precise plan is, number one, creating a vision for what an area should be, what our vision is as a city. Once that vision is adopted, then there are a number of different guidelines that go on behind it regarding zoning, uh, maybe building aesthetics, height, uh, use, different things like that. So that there's a, a road map that guides whoever owns a piece of property, who wants to buy a piece of property, who wants to develop, about what the city's vision is for that area. There's a lot more technical stuff to it, but I kept it real simple. It's a vision for an area and then all the supporting guidelines behind it so that there's clarity on what we want to happen in that part of our city. And so El Camino Real is a big one that's coming. And, and really what's happening these days, when we talk about housing, the traditional template for affordable housing was near public transit, walk, be able to walk to services, and not to have a car. Now our seniors would like that, and now our millennials would like that. And so we have three cohorts of generations that all want the same thing, and we're trying to figure out how to be able to support that in Redwood City. Did that help? Good. Senator Hill. Thank you. Who will be the next city manager? That's a great city manager. <laughs> <laughs> He's not leaving right away, so we have time to work through that. So. But Bob's been our great city manager. I hope you take time to say thank you. We will be back later in the year for a celebration and to really officially thank Bob for what he's done for our city and how he's led our team. Okay. Well, one of the things that we discussed Monday night at our mid-year uh, budget review is an idea in a first step to start a senior day in our downtown and a shuttle that will go to our senior, our Veterans Memorial Senior Center, our North Fair Oaks Center, as well as Casa de Redwood, um, Woodside Manor over in that area, and bring our seniors to our downtown and, and work with the merchants to have a special senior day. So that's a first step and that is in our funding plan for 1516. If uh, we can possibly start it earlier, we would love to. So it is a way to celebrate our seniors. But other shuttles are planned to be able to move people around. And I think you saw a potential streetcar line. And that is something that we are in the process of studying. How great would that be? Hop on the streetcar and go to your downtown. When we talk about traffic in our city and, and the county, it's, there's no one single answer. It takes a lot of different things working together. Um, Council Member Aguirre is a uh, commissioner on the Metropolitan Transportation Commission. Vice Mayor Faust is on the Transportation Authority, Samtrans, Caltrain. It takes all of this working together to alleviate traffic. And in this room, actually yesterday morning, there was a seminar called Breakfast of Transportation Champions. Hopefully I got that right. And our advocates and our employers were working together to figure out that last mile connection and how to get their employees to get out of their cars, take public transit, and get that last mile connected to their office. And we're making a difference, but it's everyone working together to make that difference happen. And I think just, just sort of, sorry Steve, to piggyback on, the mayor tends to downplay our regional, or his regional activities. And four members of the city council, that is seven members total, are on regional transportation bodies. Mayor G actually sits on the JPB for Caltrain, so your commuter rail. He also is the immediate past chair of the Sam Trans Board of Directors. 
Council may member and former mayor Aguirre is on the Metropolitan Transportation Commission. Former mayor and current council member Diane Howard has been extremely active in the Water Transit Associates to bring ferry service along the peninsula, in particular to Redwood City. And then I sit on the San Mateo County Transportation Authority, which manages your half cent sales tax for transportation projects. So four out of your seven council members, all of us are active. Um, council member Siebert, past member of Dumbarton Rail, so you can add him to the fifth. Council member Pierce, council member Bain, they have all been active on regional bodies. And, and Council Member Pierce, one of her objectives is really to see this El Camino Real precise plan prior to her leaving the council in November. So we're working hard to see that vision happen. But our mayor does a whole lot and he really hats off to him. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Thank you, thank you. And I actually want to recognize, I'm not, I don't know if we recognize, former mayor Danny Gasparini is here yes. with us as well today. Sorry. Thank you. One last question before we wrap up. I know everyone's got a work day to go to. Otherwise, you're going to have to hold your water glasses. Yes. Um, I, 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 for me, it's kind of simple. It's because the whole credit goes to the downtown precise plan. It's what this gentleman said earlier. It's the clarity of vision. Our downtown precise plan started almost 20 years ago with the community task force, and they created the vision for our downtown. City Council then took that vision and started implementing when we had redevelopment with Courthouse Square, the cinema project. The cinema project, I remember the days when I was on the Architectural Review Committee, people were saying it was too big for our city. It was gonna to bring too many people in. This is the Cinemark chain, that theater is one, of, it's in the top five, if I recall, mm -hmm. in terms of patrons and volume in the entire Cinemark chain. But then the downtown precise plan, going to your question earlier, that clarity. What do we want? What kind of uses do we want? What do we want it to look like? Where do we want it to be? That clarity, you know, from a development standpoint, developers don't, they're, they're gamblers to start with. I do construction. Developers are gamblers, but they don't always want to bet against the house. They want to know what they need to do to make informed decisions so they can go and develop and build in our city. And our downtown precise plan provides that clarity. Is it a sure thing? No, it isn't, because there's things like banks and interest rates and all those other things that we don't control. But that clarity of vision, what do you need to do to get things done, how do you do it, I think is what's guided that excitement and that um, uh, the growth and, and the volume of our downtown. And we're just at that cap, I believe, Aaron, right? We're just at the limit. So what you see basically is what is going to be right now until we learn about this new neighborhood that's coming to downtown Redwood City. You want to add anything else to that, Roseanne? That's great. Thank you. Before I turn it back over to Sam, I just want to thank you on behalf of our vice mayor, our city council, our city team. We are Redwood City. I hope you join us in celebrating this year. And for some of you that are lucky, so you better hold on to your water glasses. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm trying. We are Redwood City. We are Redwood City. Thank you.
Thank you so much. That was great. Uh, there's really so much going on. I encourage you to look at these uh, pictures along the wall. There's even a picture of uh, Mayor G trying to connect the, uh, the fire hose to a hydrant down there. Um, that's why they didn't turn the water on. But I, I want to mention a couple of chamber events coming up, just so you're aware of them. We have an exciting legisla legislative bus trip to Sacramento. Thank you, uh, Senator Hill, for uh, joining us on that. That's uh, on Monday, March 2nd. A uh, networking mixer coming up March 18th at Del Grande dealership. Uh, the Progress Seminar, which is a fantastic event that most of you know about, April 17th to the 19th at the Hyatt Regency in Monterey. Finally, the Kynos Golf Tournament, May 11th at Stanford Golf Course. So have a great morning. Um, we got out a little bit early, so stick around. Talking, I'll be talking to Alan Beals, apologizing for building the Stanford Shopping Center back in the 50s. So uh, enjoy your morning, and thank you. Thank you very much.